The power of the moon's energies is undeniable, and we witness it in changing tides, dreams, and our bodily cycles. Sinking our lives with its phases can aid us in living a life that is greater harmony with nature and its ever-changing seasons. Have you ever felt your mood, feeling, or body behave or act differently during times of the month? Have you ever considered that it could be aligning to the energy of the moon and you're being called to go inwardly to discover more about yourself? If any of this resonates, then tune in to today's episode. Welcome back, Soul Tribe. I'm in a magical energy today and I'm very excited to discuss this topic. I find so powerful and impactful for the mind, body and soul. Today's episode, Moon Magic, will be explored further with our special guest, Bex from Cosmic Cures. Bex is an astrologer, cosmic coach, crystal healer, and founder of the Moonchild Sorority. She helps people align and shine with their own potential by harnessing the power of cosmic energies. The aim is to use the stars and the lunar flow to tap into the highest vibrations, moving from being the passenger on the star-studded journey to being in the driving force. She's contributed to the Express, Metro, Glamour, and Bustle, holds regular moon ceremonies, has an astro guide subscription that helps you move through the month using cosmic energies and has developed a crystal healing course for beginners. With a Virgo sun and a Scorpio moon, Bex has always followed her curiosity to delve into the magical depths of spirituality, delivering her findings in practical and proactive methods we can all use. She's built her practices on the concept that where attention goes, energy flows, and has absolutely no doubt that we can all live the life we desire if we focus our attention on being our best self. So with that said, I'd love to welcome Bex to this episode. I am so thankful to have met you, Bex, and to have you here today to discuss this topic of moon magic. How are you doing, lady? I'm so well, thank you. And uh, thanks for that wonderful introduction. I'm just as excited to be here with you. Can't wait to talk moon magic and all things spiritual with you. Oh, yeah, me too. And can I just say before we get into this, you do have this kind of beautiful fairy like mermaid glow to you. I don't know what it is. Don't know if you was always like that, but I just feel that you were destined to be in this area. (laughs) I think that's also I've got a Libra rising and I think a few people have said like oh you're very Libra rising in your appearance like a little bit ethereal um definitely been kind of compared to kind of like yeah fairy mermaid vibes before so it's funny that you say that but yeah I love it I'm all for those kind of yeah fantasy um, (laughs) connotations. (laughs) Well, we've got a lot in common because you've got Libra rising, I've got Libra moon, you've got Scorpio moon and I'm Scorpio sun. So I think the energies just feels right. We're aligned. I think, you know, I'm I'm excited to get into this with you because I have really, you know, admired the power of the moon and you have a lot of insight and experience around this. So I think for our listeners today, this is this is going to be brilliant. And I think there's a lot that they can take away that they can use in their day to day life and, you know, integrate it. So But before we get into that, I mean, you know, you're really passionate about astrology. And I just wanted to ask you before we get into moon magic itself, like what got you into this area? And and was it challenging? Because, you know, it's not the typical kind of like, hey, mom, I'm going to go study maths and then become like a mathematician or a a statistical analysis. You know, like it's a it's different, isn't it? It's kind of a bit more out there and maybe not so well respected. I feel more spiritual kind of esoteric type areas don't get the love that they deserve or the respect that they deserve. That's a really good point. And I think if I had had a different upbringing, that would be yeah, a very fair comment. Um, for me, particularly if I had said that I was going to be any kind of analyst, I think my parents would have been completely gobsmacked. <laughs> That's what would have really shocked them. I think, you know, the fact that I've become an astrologer, it, it's just, yeah, it makes so much sense to them. They're like, okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, I mean, especially with my dad. My dad's kind of my guru and I've always grown up with spirituality in my life. He is, you know, he's a Reiki healer. He's a hypnotherapist. Wow. He's a life coach. He's, a, you know, he's been practicing shiatsu and yoga for over 50 years and you know when I was younger we grew up near Glastonbury the town yeah. and so we used to go on day trips there and I used to, you know got my first crystals when I was nine years old and got my first pack of tarot cards when I was 13 so I've, it's 
always been ingrained in me. And I remember flicking through my dad's books on um, astrology and horoscopes when I was really young and just being fascinated by them, fascinated by runes, fascinated by the I Ching, all of this, um, and really embracing it. And I spent a lot of time with my dad when I was young because I was in hospital for quite a bit of um, my childhood and he really instilled in me the whole concept of where attention goes energy flows and we would meditate and we'd do yoga together so I've grown up with it you know it's second nature to me and and I feel like I was always going to go in this direction in my 20s I was much more interested in travel I always loved writing so I kind of manifested my dream job there and I used to just you know as a travel writer traveled around oh. the world um, all over yeah and, and got to do that and then I've always been interested um, in moving with the moon. It's, you know, I've got more passionate about it in the last few years and was doing things with friends, doing sm holding smaller sessions, um, smaller events, reading birth charts for friends. And then when lockdown hit, yeah, last year, then I had to pivot and just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm seeing this as a sign. I'm going to kick off the astrology business. I'm going to set up Cosmic Cures, which happened around a solar eclipse last year. Oh, wow. and, yeah, yeah. And actually, I posted one of my first ever posts on Cosmic Cures. I think my second post was about a lunar eclipse. And as we'll talk about, you know, later in the episode, um, eclipses are huge for making shockwaves in your life. And it happened in my 10th house of career and ambition. And, um, and yeah, I just saw it as a sign. And it's just, I mean, it's been like, um, uh, like the trajectory over the last 12 months has been incredible and I've been so lucky and I've been so supported by my family by my friends I think you know the main um the main uh, reaction I get is curiosity and uh I, yeah I suppose I've had maybe a couple of people that have kind of said yeah but it's not real is it and to them I just say if you want to choose to believe it's not real that's completely your prerogative for me I do believe it's real and the results speak for themselves. I'm incredibly happy. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you can follow your road and I'll follow mine. I love that. Wow. Like, because I, as you were explaining, and I didn't know this about you, just as you explain the connection with your dad and how you grew up, I think it's phenomenal. And I feel like that's the way forward for, uh, you know, raising children is to bring them more to the the basis of like who we are, like really knowing who we are, connecting with ourselves. So the fact that you said, you know, you were spending time with your dad, learning yoga, meditate, my like my heart just got so warm there. I was just like, I could, I was visualizing you as a child, by the way. And I, I, oh, I I've already yeah. got a picture of what your dad looks like. But he probably doesn't look <laughs> like that. But that's, and, and just, yeah, growing up near Glastonbury, I only knew like maybe about a year or two ago that Glastonbury is also heart chakra energy. So I was just like, wow, like, I just didn't know all of this stuff. So, you know, me seeing it from my perspective where I was told, don't read horoscopes, you know, you know, it, it, you just have to follow religion. And I've gone against that now. And, you know, I've explained that to my dad and he gets it and he gets where I am now. But I was told a completely different thing. And so I just... I feel that this way forward is like, you know, you just connect with yourself and you work with nature and you work with what's around you. And I think that that is the most trusted source for us. So it's so beautiful that your dad sounds like an absolute legend. So hi, dad. I don't know you. <laughs> But oh, he really dad, is, really is. <laughs> I hope you're listening because <laughs> you've raised a magical woman. And so that, oh, that's so beautiful. So, yeah. And then like, so you've done that in 12 months. Now that is phenomenal. So the next question I wanted to ask you is like, you've actually written guidance for some major like newspapers and magazines like Metro, Glamour. I was calling it out earlier on Bustle. I love Bustle. And so you managed to do that in the last 12 months. I mean, that's quite, you know, how did you do that? Like, was it this great eclipse energy? Were you just taking leaps of faith? I think it's a combination of things. Um, it's a combination. Of, so I've got an incredible, I call her my astro agent. Uh, she's this woman called Lauren. And I've known her since my days of being a travel journalist. And she, um, you know, she kind of PR. And so she knows a lot of people in newspapers. So she actually got me a few of these gigs 
by just knowing people who said, have you got anyone that can write horoscopes? And then so she put me forward. I've got a history of writing. I've done a master's in creative writing. So that's also really good. It bodes well that I can, I can, you know, put things together well and I can work to deadlines. So that kind of kicked things off. I think also working hard, being very consistent on Instagram because Instagram is my main platform for getting people to notice me. So networking on there, people have found me. So for example, the bustle piece, I was about crystal healing and the, um, the woman that wrote that and wanted some contributions for that, she actually follows Cosmic Cures. So, you know, she'd found me on Instagram. So that's great timing in that way. Um, I've done things on Clubhouse. I've done some great collaborations with the um, astrologer for British Vogue and with this great jewelry brand called the uh, Local Eclectic. And they, and I find them on Instagram just by divine timing. But also, I would just say with all of this, like manifestation, I really truly believe in manifestation. <laughs> with the Metro piece, for example, that morning it was a full moon and I'd written down that I would love to manifest another piece of um, coverage and I actually had in my mind um, Kirsty Gallagher because she'd just been on this morning and then a few hours later Lauren got in contact was like oh Metro I want you to talk about the full moon and uh, like Kirsty Gallagher was also just there <laughs> doing it and the two of us our names were in the same sentence and I you know and part of me still marvels at it because I, I genuinely can't believe sometimes how on point the universe Versus. but also you just have to have that trust and you have to just you know be like oh brilliant thank thank you again universe I totally have faith in you I'm so grateful and that I think that's how I live most of my life now it's just you know having complete faith in in what the universe can bring wow that that is beautiful that is magical and I I've got goosebumps I was jumping up <laughs> I was trying to contain my screaming when you just said that last bit but yeah the point that you mentioned about manifestation and we'll get into that a bit later oh gosh I'm so excited about this episode but you know your point about Instagram that's how we met and it was just the strike of I think either you saw one of the posts we did you commented and you said check out some of our stuff I went to your page and I was like whoa who is this this is great this is because you know we're always reposting content because for the soul tribe it's not just about what we talk about it's about the community it's about the whole movement so you know I'm always looking for the best kind of content especially zodiac stuff because I'm always like well you know I want something that's going to give a bit more substance you do some great stuff I think you did the um the venus placement the other the other day or today and I was like oh wow that's a great one to like you know, educate the soul tribe on because there's a lot of detail to these things and it can be overwhelming. And the way you put it together and, you know, articulate it in, in, in quite a simple way, but it still has the depth of what's going on, I think is needed when you're trying to navigate, especially even if you're like at the beginning of it going, oh, I want to learn more, but either end of the scale. So, so that's how we met. And that was divine timing because divine timing to be on this series which I was like on the prep for so I'm well, yeah and I, I think I mentioned to you that I'd put I think earlier that day or the day before that I wanted another great collaboration to come up <laughs> yes. and, then you, and then you messaged me and I was like oh there we go again like <laughs> <laughs> and I was manifesting yeah I was setting intentions of like meeting you know the right people to kind of collaborate with for the podcast in series three and one of the biggest desires I've had is around the moon and talking about, you know, the lunar cycles, um, astrology. So then you like a fairy just, just <laughs> pop up and I'm like, oh, and then I and then I see what you look like and I see your page and I'm just like, this is literally fairy dust. I'm being blessed. <laughs> so oh. let's take a moment to give thanks because we've been divinely orchestrated to be here together. And I'm super thankful to the universe for this. We really have. Yeah, I feel very, very grateful that we have, we've connected like this. It's really exciting. So let's get into it, Bex. Let's talk about moon magic. So from your point of view, how would you describe it? 
So I would say moon magic is essentially harnessing the power of the moon. Um, I like to say it's like moving with the flow of, of lunar energies. And I always compare it to kind of being taken um, from being a passenger on your star studded ride uh, to being in the driving seat. So it's really a chance to regain some control, uh, but also being in flow. And flow is the essential word here because much like the moon goes through many phases sometimes she's very bright in the sky sometimes she completely retreats so do we need to do that and and the moon has always been linked to feminine energy it's always been yin energy it's always been mothering nurturing energy and it represents the kind of divine feminine in us and we're very used to being in our masculine energy we've had to be in this western world especially for females if they want to get to the top if they want to get out there they have to be in their masculine they have to be kind of achieving and ambitious but it's also so important to just allow that feminine flow to come out as well and that's how we reach a higher sense of contentment and fulfillment fulfillment and you know that's also how we we achieve more success because you can't do it just on action alone you have to feel into it so i would say for me moon magic is yeah harnessing the power of the moon um honoring our intuition using those cosmic energies and like releasing ourselves to something higher essentially well said and I have to pick on a few things that you mentioned there about the flow and how the moon you know sometimes she's bright sometimes she retreats and that's what we need to do and a lot of the episodes that we've had up until this point we've talked about you know being kind of in your flow and it's really hard because like you said we we haven't really learned to do it like that from you know we've kind of we have to go and get stuff done so you've got to do this and, you've got to, and to step back is quite hard to surrender is hard but I have, and we've just said, you know, and you've said, you know, sometimes when you retreat, you trust the universe, you surrender. There are magical moments. You don't have to do this alone. You can co-create with the universe and the moon and the sun, the stars are all part of that, right? So true. So true. And I remember, I mean, a few years ago, I was at this amazing retreat in Thailand and I was having these kind of like one-to-one chats with this incredible soul healer. And talking about like all my ambitions and things and and especially as a Virgo son um, and just the kind of person I am I love to be proactive and I love to get things done and I've always found it harder to release control of things also I feel like I have got to so many places where I want to be in life I feel like I've been successful at so much I feel really grateful to that but for a while a few years back it really did make me think well I can't take my foot off the pedal now then because it will come crashing down around me um and I was talking to this soul healer and they just she just said to me um well if this is what you've achieved when you're in control imagine if you just kind of let the universe in to work uh, you know that, that, that magic a little bit then what else could come into your life and that really stuck with me and I was like okay yeah that's so true if I'm trying to be in control too much I'm not allowing like divine intervention at all so I think that was a real crucial point for me when I realized that it doesn't have to be all like doing it can be like flowing and that's equally getting to where you want to go if that makes sense yeah yeah does totally I can totally relate to that because I was always just on the go, on the go. And I didn't stop to think, actually, I can be assisted. And I guess it's just what we learn from when we're young, you know, I, you know, to, to, to achieve, you must do. And the more you do, the more you achieve, but there's the state of, so, you know, you go from the state is consciousness, right? Having, I have Mm. a car, I have this, I have these jewels and then doing, I have to work really hard. I must do these actions to achieve this and then being and that state of being in consciousness I mean it's not easy because you have to really I think there's a lot of the breaking down the ego and being able to find that balance in yourself but the being state is like the I know when to retreat right I know just to be to trust and to work with the universe and allow you know this co-creation so it's a journey, right? Even I'm still like, I can't, I don't think anyone can ever say, oh, you know, I'm in that being and I'm always there because we have to keep reminding ourselves because we do fall back into the, oh, got to get this this done and got to get that done. Or what about that deadline? So 
And we need that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> well, you and me wouldn't even be here today. It would be like, oh, oh, yeah, we've got to record now. I'll just rock we've up. It's been being for too long. <laughs> <laughs> so there is, you know, we do need that organisation, but it's to what extent do we really need to push it to its limit, you know, and, and let's allow some headroom to just flow with it like fairies <laughs> exactly exactly flow with it is the key and I think also it's just that constant reminder to ourselves that as much as it's great to get things done and to be I like you know p- to participate actively in life that's not gonna be essentially what gains us happiness and contentment that can only ever come from being so all the other stuff is superfluous that is just life and life does happen and we are human beings and we're not like the, these kind of like divine presences on in this lifetime but um but yeah the doing isn't what is gonna create happiness for it that is always going to be the being yeah yeah absolutely so you know when I think about the moon and there's always this sort of stereotypical kind of views on these myths and I just want to debunk the myth on this episode with you because I think you're the right person to talk about this (laughs) You know, honouring the moon, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. That's nature. That's just as much as me, like, going and hugging the blooming tree outside. But, you know, I feel like it gets frowned upon or just regarded as, oh, you're a a bit of a wizard or a witch. You know, why are you doing that kind of stuff? Like, why are you talking about the moon? And, you know, and I I don't know what you think, but, you know, I just see it as nature. It's available to all of us. So it's it's available to all of us. Like, why, why does it have to be something that's regarded as something a bit weird yeah completely I think over the years it's kind of got either a bad rap or it's just become uh kind of confused with more of the witchy vibes let's say and some people who work the moon do identify as a witch and that's completely fine um that might be because they have pagan sensibilities and equally if you want to identify as a pagan or a druid like it's so completely up to you how you you do want to kind of present yourself I personally just you know see myself as someone who like it's very spiritual and who loves working with the moon harnessing the power of the moon and like you say it's available to all of us we've been working with the moon since we since we were first on this planet you know if you think about it when when we were first first like roaming the plains or whatever we were as early man and woman then we would have had to be working with the flow of the moon because on full moons on moonlit nights then we'd be more identifiable by predators so we've had been very aware of that and on you know new moon nights it was a lot darker we'd have also been aware of that the moon controls the tides so farmers have worked with the moon for years and years and years until like you know quite recently in modern times where they've worked with other processes but there's absolutely nothing kind of cultish about working with the moon it is just it's nature it's natural yeah I I love the way you kind of broke that down it's it is from the origins of 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 mankind you know part of nature and part of creation itself so yeah Mm -hmm. I do love looking at a full moon I have to say and seeing how different full moons kind of look at different times of the year some really bright some kind of look a bit yellowish and so can I see a bit of a face on that moon and you know, I just find it quite fascinating the way it changes its um, look across yeah. the year. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> on that note, I was going to get into the lunar cycles because obviously, you know, there's there's eight different phases is what I'm understanding. And obviously, we kind of understand that the main ones maybe are the new moon and the full moon. And when we talk about lunar cycles, I know that there's eight phases of the moon, uh, but the ones commonly used for moon rituals revolve around the full moon and the new moon, and the sun and the moon come into alignment during the new moon, right? So joining the sun and the moon's masculine and feminine energy, and the time is associated with like positive change. And then during the full moon, I know I always say to myself, oh, no, it's a full moon. What's going to happen? I'm going to be crying. <laughs> Scorpio. That's the Scorpio in me. And I've got cancer rising. So, girlfriend, it is like. Oh, yeah, there. you got some big water signs there. <laughs> but, you know what? Every weekend for me is a full moon. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, the mood is fully feminine, I think, in the full moon in some ways and um, with nourishment and that intuition but also quite magical to do the kind of creativity, personal 
inward looking type activity what is there that needs to surface and cleanse and and you know what might you need to kind of confront that you're kind of holding back maybe you're being triggered you need to face some of those but I I wanted to ask you like in terms of these lunar cycles because obviously there's eight phases but how do they really impact us and and also then how can we work with them so yeah, you're completely right there. Um, we've got the four the four key moons and the four key phases, I suppose you could say. So our key moons are the new moon. And that's usually what we uh, think about as the beginning of a lunar cycle. And that's when the sun and the moon are conjunct and they're in the same zodiac sign. And with their combined power of that zodiac sign, we can set intentions. Uh, it's, about, it's about new beginnings, uh, about a new phase. Um, it's also about really connecting with our intuition because there's this so the whole point is because the sun and the moon are in the same zodiac sign they're close to each other none of the sun's light is shining onto the moon so it does appear like she's retreated from the sky and we're kind of flooded with darkness and so during this darkness we have this real option to retreat within ourselves and because we haven't got that sensory uh, stimulation of the light in the sky then our other senses prick up so our intuition becomes easier to connect with so we can listen to those souls whispers we can ask ourselves what is it we need what do I want to work with how do I want to work with these zodiac energies or where the sun and the moon both are in order to set my intentions in order to manifest magic so that's how we use the new moon Um, and then we have the full moon two weeks later and by that time the moon has traveled halfway around the earth and is in the opposite zodiac sign to the sun and so the full force of the sun's light is shining onto the moon in this case and so the whole surface is being lit up and so surface is a really good word to remember here because things come to the surface for us and this is why around full moons we can feel quite emotional quite discombobulated um we can feel like things that like reoccurring that perhaps we've been trying to push down and that's you know because they want to come to the surface they won't be hidden anymore our shadow selves want to be noticed and so the full moon is a really great chance of release and working with limiting beliefs and looking at the intentions that you set two weeks ago during that new moon and saying right what hasn't come to pass what have I not managed to get on board with what have I not managed to harness and is this because of limiting beliefs within myself am I blocking myself because of old stories or habits or just things that I take to be truth and fact when actually if I unpick them I can realize that I have so much more potential to go beyond these you know these don't serve me anymore so we really use full moons as a chance to release but then in between the new moon and the full moon we have our first quarter moon and so this is when it you look up into the sky and it appears that the moon is sliced right down in the middle and on our first quarter moon what we're really looking at there is This is where the first obstacles kind of appear in our journey towards manifesting magic. We can feel like we're being blocked. But actually what we're being asked to do in this first quarter moon is change our perspectives and actually see where have we been thinking that one direction was the right way to go. When you look at the side of the box, is the universe offering us a different route to take? So that's what the first quarter moon is really all about. And then the last quarter moon, which comes a week after the full moon, so a week before that new moon, that is all about cleansing and decluttering and forgiving as well, forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. Essentially, what we're doing with our last quarter moon is we're preparing the soil for when we plant intentions over that new moon. We're weeding things out. We're making sure that we haven't got anything clinging on to us that's going to inhibit us when we're setting intentions. So that's what we mean by cleansing. And that's both physically by, you know, giving your space a tidy up, making sure you're not blocking energies, but also spiritually and emotionally, making sure you have no sort of energy vampires around you, making sure sure that you have got strong boundaries set up and that you you know you understand that no can be a loving word and that you're not giving your energy away to too much so those are the four key phases um or the key moons sorry and then in between those we have the key phases so between the new moon and the first quarter moon we have the waxing crescent and that's when you look up and you get that classic crescent shape in the sky and during these few days the moon appears to be growing each night in the sky and so this is a real time of kind of exciting energy building putting things into place being motivated you know we've just had our new moon so we've set these intentions we're really excited by them 
and we want to make action happen. So we're using this waxing crescent phase to really put into place things that we want to change and, you know, take action with it. Uh, and then after our first quarter moon just before that full moon we have the waxing gibbous and that's when it's like slightly more bulbous not quite that full moon yet but this is a time of abundance and this is a time of really putting effort and like solidifying those plans that you've made really really putting your time into them see, seeing them kind of bloom and blossom and it's a really good time during this waxing give us uh, to also give something give a gift either of your time a physical gift give it to a friend give to charity but the process of giving and the energy of giving has the same vibrational frequency as that of receiving. So when you give during this waxing gibbous phase, then what you're actually telling the universe is that you're ready for more abundance in yourself. So it's a really good time to do that. Then after your full moon, between your full moon and your last quarter moon, you have that waning gibbous and waning means getting smaller. So each night the moon appears to be getting slightly smaller, but it's still kind of, you know, that, that bulbous shape. And the waning gibbous is a time of appreciation for what you have, what you've created, gratitude. Again, um, great time for gift giving, but this time give something to yourself, like show yourself love, uh, give yourself either yeah, time and space to do something that you enjoy or, you you know, treat yourself to something if you can. And then right between the last quarter moon and our new moon is our waning crescent. And so this is when the moon is the smallest sliver in the sky and getting smaller each night right before that new moon phase. And this is when our energy is at the lowest ebb. So it's really important during this waning crescent time that you prioritize self-care, that you don't try and expend too much energy. You don't try and um, kind of fill your diary too much. You allow yourself to feel vulnerable. You allow yourself to like, feel all the emotions and you're just really, really kind to yourself. So once you are aware of all of these moons and all of these phases and you can look ahead to the month, it's just, it becomes so wonderful for planning things, you know, for planning dates, for planning social events, for planning when you're just going to have a bit of time to yourself. And that's one of the reasons I love working with the moon it just makes so much sense to me that was incredible and I have to say I was there going oh gosh I didn't know that and I didn't know that and <laughs> the, the quarter moons I, I found that interesting because they seem like preparation for the the key milestones of the full moon and the new moon and I've never known that so I have to humble myself because I'm learning right now like live to what you're saying and <laughs> Well, that's a really interesting, like before the one that I liked the most was before the new moon, because, you know, sit down, do the intentions, get ready for the new moon energy. But actually the period just before you need to kind of like clear, declutter and prepare for that. I never knew that. So that's yeah, really that's, interesting. That's one of my, um, one of my f- I wouldn't say favorite, but I really, really feel like that's an unappreciated moon as well, this last quarter moon. And actually when I, you know, I've done coaching sessions before as in the, the of, taken a month and so I work with women and we flow through the month together in order to achieve their goals in a proactive sense but I always like to start on a last quarter moon rather than you know go bang on in there with a new moon setting intentions I always say no look let's use this last quarter moon energy let's really think about where you need to make these shifts first like cleansing your energy uh decluttering your space like feeling forgiveness for all and just it means that when you do enter that new moon you have nothing hanging on I just love the the idea of it being like a garden you know if you're going to go plant something in your garden and we say you plant intentions then you wouldn't you would make sure that the ground was sort of fertile and that you'd done all the weeding and that it was looking good first so that's essentially what we're doing on our last quarter moon yeah that's that's really cool and it actually goes into what I wanted to talk about next about like the moon rituals because you know actually it's nothing new. It is an ancient practice that was, you know, has been done hundreds of years ago. Like you said, you know, mankind started to work with the moon and it's been known in um, in many cultures that have worshipped the moon, like in Egypt. And personally, in recent years, I've started to create my own ritual around some of the moons. But Bex, you're you're the you're the expert on this. So what would you kind of say in terms of moon rituals? What what's useful to kind of consider around the new and the full moon? So for me, one of the key things about the uh, the moons and the rituals are is the journaling. You know, journaling for me is a bit of a non-negotiable because journaling is just so, so fabulous in that it 
kind of connects you to yourself in a way that you by using specific prompts um, and by understanding the energies that you're working with then you can kind of dig deep into issues that you may not even knew that you had you can work with like releasing these limiting beliefs you kind of touch base with your soul in a way and so journaling yeah for me throws up so so much stuff and and you might have one journaling prompt that is you know based on the zodiac sign as I said so for example we have the uh, solar eclipse in Gemini coming up which is all about broadening our horizons you know that's one of the things you know how can you change perspective and broaden your horizons so one journaling prompt might be what do I consider to be a universal truth about myself that actually I can really look at where that stems from? And so I might think, oh, I'll write a paragraph on that. And then three pages later, I've got to the nitty gritty of something that I didn't even realize was hiding away in the corner of my brain. And suddenly I'm like, oh, do you know what? I was approaching this, this moon thinking I had to work on this or thinking I intended to work on this. Actually, I've unpacked something completely different so for me journaling is absolutely crucial and I always really really um really recommend that and a meditation as well I would say because meditation is what helps us settle it's like into our intuition um, essentially it helps us connect with ourselves this whole idea of removing ourselves from the clamor of the outside world which is what we really really want to do during moons we want to touch base with our intuition and with our own personal insight and so meditation really really powerful and that can be a guided meditation I often do guided meditations and visualizations during my moon ceremonies based again on where the the zodiac sign energy is because it just once more helps us realize things about ourselves and that's all that these moon ceremonies are essentially it's you know self-reflection but it's self-reflection using the power of the moon so I would say meditation I would say journaling and everything else is just like a wonderful addition to that. So for example, the, like the burn ritual is really, really wonderful. That's uh, something that you can do over a full moon and that's releasing of limiting beliefs. Um, Writing down your intentions is another one that I would say definitely do because it provides you with a kind of um, a roadmap for how you want the next four weeks to be doing manifestation work, working on writing down what you want to manifest in life. I find that really, really, great so yeah I'd say that those those things would be meditation manifestation intention setting and then um, above all journaling that's really good advice it's great advice and I was um, sort of saying to myself oh Steph you need to work on the journaling it's not that I you know what it is I love meditating so I do a lot of that around the moons but probably do need to get the journal out and do you know what Bex I have to thank you because you're the reason why I brought out my journal and started writing down stuff attended one of the new moons I think it was new moon and Taurus of one of your ceremonies and I just and I think I said this to you but you know I, I'd kind of do some bits and pieces like I'll burn some say do some palo santo have some nice meditation music make sure my space is clean, meditate, might have a salt bath, you know, put some nice essential oils on. I do all of that stuff, but I I really enjoyed your ceremony because it kind of got me to really sit in one place and your journaling kind of guidance and what we were doing, those exercises. I've never done that before. So there's some techniques that Bex uses, guys, which is super cool. And um, she does do these ceremonies, so look out for it. I'm going to be posting them up and I've been sharing them, but I definitely will try to attend the next one, the solar eclipse one, because I know how powerful this lunar and solar eclipse window that we're sitting in now, whenever this goes live, it'll probably be a few weeks after, but yeah, eclipse uh, eclipse energy is, is massive, as you said, but yeah, you got me to really bring out the journal and I was forced to do it. I kind of turned my video off, if you notice, because I was like, a little bit shy. But <laughs> ne- next one, I'm going to turn it on. But yeah, so those, but that that's a really good assistant. So I just want to encourage anyone that's listening that if you really need a bit of guidance, I think Bex has a great program that she puts together. And because she knows so much about the moon and about, you know, how to kind of navigate at those times of, of the cycle, I just think she comes with really great prompts and approaches that helps you get the most and to harness that energy. And then you can go off and continue that for the next four weeks and, and stuff like that. So really, really cool. And 
you know, I was just thinking to myself, what was I doing before the <laughs> before I really noticed the moon I don't know what I was doing I was probably so you know just oblivious to it and I'm sure many of us are but I think those that are coming to know more about the moon and a lot of our listeners are I think this is a really great time to start tapping into this because it is nature and it's connected to the universe and you can't go wrong you know it's not it's just not fake. It's just totally real. And it's alive. It's living. It's breathing. You can see the moon. You can feel the moon. You can kind of embrace it in so many ways. So thank you for that, uh, Bex. But yeah, so you run the new moon and full moon ceremony. So as I say, and I've attended some, and you've got a couple coming up. So how how often do you do these? I just want you to tell the, the audience a bit more about it. So currently I hold new moon ceremonies once a month because there is a monthly new moon. And what's so great is that each new moon is different because what I, this is usually every now and then you have a month where you'll have the a new moon in the same sign. But generally the new moon is a natural progression from the next one. So our last one was Taurus and our next one is going to be Gemini. So each new moon ceremony, it kind of has a similar structure in that we'll do meditation we'll do visualization we'll do group journaling and then we'll do work on intention setting manifestation goal setting but each is flavored with the different essence of the zodiac sign it sits in and because everything to do with the universe is flow each naturally moves on from the next so the um the astrological new year starts with Aries and that started in March um, 20th March so I held a new moon ceremony then and Aries energy fire energy cardinal fire energy is all about getting things done putting in things into place motivation so we did a lot of work in that ceremony all about like what is it that you've been putting off for too long what do you want to get started like what are you going to set like the sparks of now and then the ceremony in Taurus, Taurus is fixed earth energy. And so that is all about where is your comfort zone and where do you really need to move out of your comfort zone? You know, where actually could you be stepping into this zone of potential? So we were working with that energy and now we are going into Gemini. And Gemini is very much all about broadening our horizons, letting ourselves like grow, merge, collaborate with each other. Um, You know, it's a mutable air sign. So essentially what we've done is we've lit the spark with Aries energy and we've tended the earth with Taurus energy. And now we're allowing those like branches and roots of ideas to spread far and wide with the, uh, with the Gemini energy. And I just love the fact that each ceremony, something different is brought to the table. And I really try and incorporate that with all of the different meditations things and it's just so wonderful because I've now got women that have been to every single one and they are like working in flow with their with the moon ceremonies and their intentions and that is just wonderful and I'm really really proud of the cosmic community that's being created there I love the way you explained the the shifting of the energies with the new moon from Aries to Gemini that's so real build up. I'm I'm coming to the next one. I've got I've got to make sure I'm I'm available because I I want to make the most out of it, and that's why I'm attending, guys. It's not that I I feel I can do it, but I feel like I'm going to get even more out of it, and I've got nothing to lose. Like let's manifest everything we want, right? Stay grateful, exactly. stay in flow, though. It's not about being greedy. We're grateful for what we have, but it's just creating more of the life that aligns to our soul. That's what I like to say totally totally oh it's gonna be so lovely to have you at the next one I'm really really excited to have I'll you put now. the video on but you know what it's because I was running late last time and they're like oh sod she's the late one so I was like okay turn off the camera oh, <laughs> oh no you know what and it's completely up to you I mean we had I think there was about 40 45 women at the last one and half of them had their cameras off and that's absolutely fine because some of them are in their pajamas some of them are kind of like sitting in bed doing it some of them you know one of them had their like their kid with them um but then also if you want to get dressed up and you want to kind of make a real celebration of it then I really encourage that as well and it's completely up to you I'm you know very very um open for it being a safe nurturing space whatever that means to you individually so yeah I feel there's no pressure there whatsoever 
Yeah, no, I love that. And I really love the meditation you did at the end. It was it was just beautiful. So I definitely need to make sure I'm there. So I'm going to catch up with you after to make sure I'm I'm scheduled in. But yeah, it's th- this has been really cool, Bex. And I'd love to have you on again because I think that there's so much more we could talk about. You are a, you are a plethora of all this insight, you know. You live and breathe <laughs> it. It's just so natural and innate to you, you know. It's not forced. You, you are that fairy of great wisdom. <laughs> oh, well, I've just, I've been brought up with it. It's in my, it's in my blood and my soul. And yeah, I, I feel very lucky to, to feel so connected to the universe in that sense. And so, so grateful to be able to share it with others. I think that's the, the thing that I am most grateful to the universe for at the moment is how receptive an audience I have with Cosmic Cures. It's just marvellous. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say I feel I sense that you're like a star seed. You're definitely a light worker, you know, and that those oh. those light workers that have come on earth to help humanity be the best they can, raise their light, their vibration. You are one of the key players there. So keep doing what you're doing, keep being brilliant and inspiring all of us around you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to hear that. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here just to have this magical conversation. I really feel the listeners, they are going to pick up a lot of new information and guidance from this. I mean, even I did throughout this conversation as I was listening to you. But yeah, and so for for the guys listening, where can we find Bex and Cosmic Cures and all of this great stuff? So do come and join me on my Instagram, which is cosmic underscore cures. And you know, I post daily stories on there about what's going on um, in the cosmos and what the moon's doing, what the planets are doing. And then you can you know check on my grid. And then if you hit the link in my bio, there's all sorts of options about signing up to subscriptions or newsletters or getting your birth chart read or joining my crystal course, all of those kind of things. Um, or if you want to email me, then just it's bex at cosmiccures.co.uk and you can just yeah say hi let me know what you're thinking let me know if you have any questions always happy to chat spiritual things with people wonderful thank you bex and i will also have your instagram and all your details in the description box of the episode and we'll also have it posted up on the instagram page so you can go straight to bex's page when the episode's out and live so With that said, it has been such a magical episode. I'm very grateful for it. And I'm thankful to you, Bex, and thankful to the listeners. And Bex is going to leave us with a beautiful quote to end this episode. I love this quote that you've chosen. and I think it couldn't be more apt for this episode. Uh, And it reads, the moon is magic for the soul and light for the senses.